Hello, this is Gretchen Tucker again. So, um, if you saw my introduction video, I discussed um, my credentials and basically what all the topics I'm going to do in videos. So, this one is going to be on vocal health, both preventative and then what you do if you get sick. So, um, I do have some notes, so I'm going to look at my notepad. So, if I look weird, that's why. So, the, the preventative comes from one of the opera professors at Keene State College. He, um, for a vocal pedagogy class, gave us, it was like the vocal Ten Commandments. I simplified it. Um, so I'm actually going to let you know my version of it for preventative. Drinking and smoking, that's step one. If you smoke cigarettes, I would personally quit. Um, for singing, I know a lot of jazz singers. Um, and other people, rock stars, they smoke. It's not good for you. It dries you out. Uh, causes a glottal irritation, dehydration to the mucous membranes, and as we call the ENT, um, ear, nose, throat. You actually can, and I've done this, I've been checked out by an ENT doctor where they check out all your areas to see if you're in a good uh, place. So, um, and obviously we know drinking alcohol does dry you out as well. One thing, uh, speaking of being dried out, um, water, drinking eight glasses of water a day. Um, one article I read from an opera singer indicated, and I didn't know this is kind of weird, um, when you drink water, it goes to your vital internal organs first, which makes sense so you can stay alive. It goes to your throat basically last. That's why you have to drink so much for voice. And also we know our body is 90% water. Um, taking hot showers, using a vaporizer are good, a humidifier uh, at 40% are higher. Medication, this is what you really want to be careful of. Um, any um, aspirin, antihistamines, or contraceptives um, causes small hemorrhages in the vocal folds. And actually contraceptives um, drop your... Uh, Tessitura, so if you're a soprano, you might be kind of alto-ish. Something to be careful of, again, dries you out. Hormonal imbalances, they have a lot of hormones in them. Um, medication, like traditional Western medication, which I'll get to later in the, like when you're actually sick, um, you should only use when you're on like bed rest and sleeping and not practicing, and it's at a place where you're just like dead to the world. I'm taking a day off, I'm sleeping. Um, over singing, shouting, speaking rapidly, and I'm um, speaking in the wrong tessitura. Um, so don't over practice. I have the bad habit of doing that myself, actually. I tend to over practice. Screaming, if you're like at a baseball game or anything like that, or at a bar, no. Um, or, you know, any kind of function, you want to save your voice. Um, sometimes if you, um, are getting ready for, let's say you're in a musical, the, a lot of teachers recommend something called vocal rest where you will practice by listening and uh, reading the music and like playing in your head and your vocal folds do this weird thing where it, they will move um, you know they'll move like this when um, you're even listening to music that's the, the beautiful powerful part about music is your body will replicate it so like if you're sick that's one thing you want to be careful of because um, like, for example, when I got my wisdom teeth out, I wanted to watch no horror movies because it's gruesome and no musical movies because, um, you know, I knew what my voice was going to do and I wasn't allowed to sing for a whole week till the stitches came out, which is really gross, but um, that kind of thing. So you want to don't overdo loudness. Um, and then one thing, if you're laughing or shouting too loud, your vocal folds will do this, they'll slap very hard and bad. Um, it's a very delicate part of the body, the size of a walnut. Um, when I do the video on the vocal anatomy, I'll go over that. It's There's a lot of parts, they're very intricate. And then I will also recommend um, some places you can look at what the vocal anatomy looks like. So um, one thing is speaking in the wrong tessitura, I have this bad habit, my speaking voice is way lower than my singing voice so um, I use the term head voice most singers would if I wanted to speak 
in a way that was compatible with my singing voice, I would talk like this. That is recommended. Um, I need to be better at that. But yeah, you want to sing with a, an open, and speak an open throat. You know, very young, like, is the preferred. So, like, be careful with um, your vocal part and your speaking voice. You should try to have it aligned and be more, um, I'm trying to think of the term my voice teacher uses, more lofty when you speak. Um, try to avoid the term, uh, the thing vocal fry. I actually find this really annoying. It's the, it's the accent the celebrity use, like Kim Kardashian. I'm going to demonstrate it's really bad for you, but it's this uh, sound like, oh my god, bad for you. Don't ever use that because it's bad for your vocal health. It's annoying and also gives you vocal nodes, which are cysts on your vocal folds. And if you've ever seen Pitch Perfect 1, where they act like the girls have cancer, uh, that's what that is. Other thing, avoid dairy. Um, some people are more sensitive than others. I'm kind of middle of the roadish, so um, there are some people who cannot have dairy at all before singing even in a chorus. Um, if I'm ill, I won't. So obviously it's um, yogurt, cheese, milk, chocolate, other dairy products. If you have weak bones and osteoporosis, I mean I don't want to give you any medical advice. I just consult with your doctor on that. Um, physical exercise is important. Um, you want to, um, a lot of singers do abs. I will, I will do that as well. I do ballet for my voice because you engage your abs and um, you plie and revelé and pilates. Anything like dance or abdominal oriented is best. Those are the like 10 commandment preventative. <clears throat> so here are the, um, let's see if you're really sick kind of thing. Sleep as much as possible, if you can. I mean, you guys are students. You're, I keep trying to use examples like in your, you're in the work world, but you're not. Um, if you are ill and you need to not go to school, um, I want to say call out, but it's that's like me being HR. But um, if you're ill, take, take the time. Um, vitamins are better than Western meds. So I take zinc every day with my medicine. I also have a gummy that has vitamin C and echinacea in it, so you could take plain vitamin C, echinacea, and zinc. Um, there's um, something called Vita Vocal Health Throat and Voice Enhancer. It's a spray, but any kind of like singer um, spray. Um, there's also Vocal Ease or Sprouts Throat 37. Um, you can make a homemade um, throat spray, and I'd like to check have people check on this, but um, they say lemon oil, oregano oil, and peppermint oil, or olive leaf extract uh, kills the bacteria. What I would do, um, since there's so many uh, vocal sprays, go on Amazon and look up vocal sprays, and you could do some research um, in like how the reviews are. For lozenges, I would not use the traditional. I've used those for years. Um, they just have a, you know, they have a flavor, and what they what bugs me is my dental. They have this uh, film on your tongue, so I have to like constantly brush my teeth. It gets this gritty crap on my teeth and use the tongue scrubber, so that really annoys me. But the best ones are so Slippery Elm Drops, which they sell at my co-op. They apply to sell it at any co-op. It's a natural base one. Vocal Zone or Fisherman's Friends. If you are... Um, in a lot of pain and you're not singing, you could take secrets. They're very numbing, but they're hardcore. Like, they're so um, intense, you should only take one or two of those a day. They're very medicated. Um, and then I go into the, the dental. Gargling salt water, um, it's good to do this anyways. It kills the bacteria. Um, you could do it a couple times a week. You could do it every day. If you're sick, do it a couple times a day. Um, you could do apple cider vinegar. Um, another co-op based thing is fire cider. Um, I think it's like vinegar and some other product. It's a, an ancient uh, remedy, but I know someone's trying to copyright it or um, not copyright it, but like claim it as their proprietary item. Again, another weird co-op, little known fact. Um, for dental, flossing, brushing your teeth, using mouthwash, tongue scrubber, change your toothbrush often. 
So if you just were sick, throw it out, get a new one. Like I'll, in between any kind of illness, make sure. Um, I like to steam in the shower. So put your throat under the shower and then steam in your mouth. Um, use a humidifier, Vicks Vapor Rub. One uh, opera singer has used the technique of taking Vicks Vapor Rub and a hot wet towel wrapping around her neck and a dry towel on top of that wrapping around her neck and sleeping with it or just relaxing watching a movie. For tea, um, chamomile is good. Um, the licorice throat coat is good. Um, that's another one that they sell at co-ops. Um, honey, lemon, and ginger um, are really good. Also bacteria and um, coating. I um, am allergic to a pure ginger so um like the like the root itself i'll break out in hives so if you have any allergies be mindful of that so i can't have that um for foods any uh soup anything garlic fruit uh berries vegetables leafy greens uh beef and spicy food that clean the sinuses so anything that's um really replenishing building your immune system and your strength um, if you're, you know, vegan or vegetarian, um, just, I would take the food on this list and what you can have, um, or do a little more research on, um, when you're ill, like what foods build your strength up in your immune system. Um, this is one thing, it's, this is a big deal, but it's kind of gross. Um, you need to clear out all the garbage because that's out of your system because that's how you can, um, get pneumonia. So, or bronchitis, and I've had bronchitis, and when you have bronchitis once, every single time you get sick, the mucus, like, stays for a very long time. I had the flu recently, and it took, like, a month for the mucus to leave. So if you, you know, have a runny nose and a little bit, that's fine, but once this, and I'm going to demonstrate, and you can't see because it's, I don't have, like, a map. Once it is here and drifts, back here it's called post nasal drip and that just slips in your chest it's hard to get rid of and you usually develop that when you're sleeping in like like this and it comes down so there's that what you want to do is I, I i do this in the shower you blow your nose you cough things up um you get it out no matter where i am i always have tissues if just get it out as soon as possible like, doesn't matter how many tissues you have to use. I went through four rolls of toilet paper when I had the flu just to get the, the garbage out. There's a lot that builds up. So, um, it's best to get all the mucus out of your system as, as soon as possible. Don't let it linger because, again, that's how you get pneumonia and bronchitis. And then, let's see, um, there's um, ocean uh, nasal spray is one other one. Um, clears this out so that is my recommendations for um, vocal preventative health and then if you get ill for oh for the Western meds so um day quill night quill uh, Sudafed all those they don't work straight up um, they have masking agents they draw you out and if you sing with it you could damage your voice and guess what? They don't make it happen any, um, you don't make you better any faster. It just numbs the pain a little bit, but I don't feel like it does. I feel the same or worse. And it makes me hallucinate and I already have like a fever and an illness it makes it worse. So I did a little test. So when I was sick, it takes like a week plus to get over the initial uh, fever and the sore throat and stuff like that. And then the last time when I had the flu, I didn't take any of that garbage. I just did sleep and tea and all this other stuff we recommended, vitamins. And it lasted about the same. It felt about the same. I felt so good, like not being sick, but I felt good because I didn't wasn't hallucinating and feeling awful. So um, they, it really doesn't work. Like I said, it dries you out. It's a masking agent. Um, these medical companies are probably making lots of money because they're very expensive. They don't work. So um, there's no shortcuts on the common cold, fever, flu, sore throats. I wish there was. I wish there was a cure for sore throats because they hurt and burn. But, yeah, if you're going to do anything, the best advice would be the sleep, the tea, the soup, the vitamins. 
just rest up. Um, and uh, if you have questions on more questions of a health, something specific, a problem, I can also answer those if we do a Q&A video. So that's what I have to offer for preventative health and a local health when you're sick. Oh, the one other thing, this is a technical thing, which I'll cover this in other videos. Well, I've been able to sing basically perfectly when I'm sick um, through doing this method, but like my regular speaking voice may be groggy and gross. If you use your diaphragmatic breath and not your throat, you'll sound like you're not even sick. It's amazing. I did it for Holy Week for church choir. Um, we had Holy Thursday, uh, Good Friday, Friday, Holy Saturday, and Easter Sunday. I sounded perfect, but I felt awful, and it, it, it was like, wow. And also, when you're ill, if you are able to sing, it really disciplines you to um, not use the throat. And you don't want to use the throat because it's, that's poor technique. So that's, um, that's that, and I'll post another video soon.